one? What's the name? George Gill. George Gill. Right. Go to the page. Yeah. You go on Facebook there, it's called Debrief TV show. Turn on the door, I want to back. Alright, so Debrief TV show. Um, good night, everyone. Uh, we're here with George Gill, myself, Kim Safi, German Bedford. Uh, tonight we will be discussing waste management. Shake up. Uh, we're just going to wait for some persons to come on and then we are going to begin talking about waste management. Again, if you see any issues, any technical glitches, let us know uh, so that we can address them as we go ahead in the show. But as again, today, as I said tonight, we will be discussing waste management. Uh, we have here George Gill. Um, that's the name, right, George? Yes, sir, sir. You got right. the we, we are pleased to have everybody here on the show. Thank you. We are pleased to have everybody here on the show to talk about this waste management. We feel waste management is a big topic. Uh, there's so much waste going, waste issue, waste problems, waste, waste problems going on in and around our homes, and uh, uh, we tend not to take it too serious. Some of us obviously don't understand waste management. So with this having the Whole waste management conversation. We hope that it would definitely show. Um, and with Josh here today, we hope that we can have a good, robust conversation about waste management. So, just taking a couple minutes to share uh, the show. So, do bear with us uh, as we share, and that so that other persons could come on and have a conversation about waste management. Uh, so, we're discussing waste management with Josh Gill today. So, just give us a minute. Just let's share these links. So. People are waiting eagerly to watch and join in the conversation with us as well. We, we would like that when we are discussing topics like these that you, the general public, uh, will feel inclined to come on to conversation and discuss us. Let's see how, it, how you feel about it and how waste management has been, uh, how it's been affecting you. So we want to hear your, and we're going to be discussing the sanitation authority, we're going to dis discuss uh, composable, uh, um, moving your, your stuff out your your food and your lease into uh, soil that you can put back in your garden for those who may have gardening. So we're gonna be discussing a number of things, a number of topics, and we're here with George Gill again. So we are ready, we're, we're getting some feedback. We wanna hear your feedback as well. We want to hear what you have to say about the whole situation of waste management. So we want that you give us your comments, your feedback, share the link, like us, follow us, debrief. Uh, we're just here with myself today and German Bedford as the moderators, but we're also here with a uh, highly intelligent and uh, well known gentleman here. Um, as we discuss this matter, we're joined now by Kimar. Hey guys, where are the others? Oh, the others are coming. You know, the traffic on the road has the guys really tight and stuff like that, but the guys are here and they will be joining in the discussion shortly as well so they are here and they're rolling in slowly so as I said, we are joined by uh george your group uh, your company is life earth yes it's a um, little ngo um we seek to operate to share as much information as possible with regards to the decisions that we make in society mm -hmm. in, in yards okay. you know, we have a, a think local at, uh, at local think global sort of uh, view to it yes uh, I strongly believe in the aspect of the please sir. We are joined by Kimar Stewart. So yes. yes. That the amount of work that we do also um, has a lot of relevance to other um, well our neighbors, our regional neighbors, as well as other smaller and developing states around the world because it's a problem that we are all mm -hmm. facing um, with just the modernization of our lifestyles, right? Right. Um, uh, all of our most uh, people between here and the Pacific Ocean, small and developing states um, have to deal with plastics that either right. wash up on our shores or originate and are part of our economies. Mm -hmm. um, so our view is to really just um, to help sensitize people to a lot of the decision-making process that we go through that obviously we don't think about it, we grew up with it, but now it's really gotten to a, a, a crisis level. Um, so we, we don't look at it as a, as a, as a, problem as a standing problem but just a solution that it's time has come so I often like to say that 
um, something like proper waste management practices um, is something like an idea which its time has come. You know, mm. We no longer look back on it as if to say this is weird or strange. This is just the way it's going to have to be going forward. You're right. So for us at Live Earth, we spend a lot of time trying to work with um, everyone that will listen to us, basically, mm -hmm. to the, the shortfalls of not thinking in, in, a, in a more uh, environmentally friendly way, um, where you can you know run yourself or ground or run yourself into trouble, and then also the alternative. So we're not into the browbeating. Um, I think we are pretty much a, a fun group of uh, uh, environmentally friendly people who really care for Barbados and you know the region in, in general and what you know our lives have come to be in these modern times. So we're not trying to tell everybody go and hug trees or you know let's all become you know all big tree family. You know long you know long hair hippie type folks who just don't worry about these things. But if the fact of the matter is um, uptown or downtown, we all have a part to play in this, especially when you consider we live on small islands. So, you know, when you throw away things, where are you really throwing them away on an island that's 166 square miles? Like, right. It's only, you know, it's only so far if you throw away things, they can end up in, if you throw them in the ocean, they can end up in, up in the neighborhood in St. Lucia and St. Vincent, and mm -hmm. the So, there's really no getting away from it. I think we've seen examples most recently, like um, um, Dominica to Maria, um, with torrents of rain that just released all manner of, you know, plastics that were clogged up and we all know these same issues here when you have drainage systems that are blocked up and clogged up with a lot of um, uh, plastics that obviously don't biodegrade um, mm -hmm. they're going to take for a long time to biodegrade right exactly. so what's going to happen is um, just think of the human heart and plaque build up within the arteries what happens you get a heart attack right. because the blood vessel burst or you get a aneurysm in your brain because you have yeah. a backup of pressure or like you know, dare I mention it? I don't want us to talk about it anymore because it's a fixed. Pro it more or less is a fixed problem. Uh, the sewage problem. The sewage problem was not a problem of just too much water. It was just a problem of there was no way for that water to pass through those block pipes. Mm. Okay. But you know, let's be frank. I mean, that water had no place to go. But come on, she got those pipes had been there for years. No one noticed it until they got blocked up. But before we before we we jump into the discussion, we've seen that the numbers are climbing because we're dealing with a very sensitive issue as it relates to waste management. Again, we would like to hear your feedback. We would like to hear your comments. Any questions or that you may have for George or the, the group here. And uh, George, we discuss it. Jump into the more serious uh, matter as it relates to. Um, waste management in Barbados, and then let's go into what yes. we do in Tahiti. Certainly. Now, we realize that the Barbadian culture is not one that really takes waste management seriously. We 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 know that, like for me, you know, I'm just being frightened and truthful. <laughs> but my garbage, all of my garbage, the bones, whether it be the chicken skins, whether it be the, 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 the peels that I just peel, the banana eat, and we throw everything in one garbage bag and I throw it outside in the can and when it can't fit in the can I put it on the fence and when it can't fit in the fence because of the lack of pickup in garbage it goes any and everywhere or wherever this dog wherever dog decide or cat decide to come and spread it out in the neighborhood and everybody know about and eat for dinner. Uh, we know that a lot of Barbados are not really at that place yeah. where they're taking waste management seriously um, we're taking the separation of garbage seriously. Uh, is your company looking at anything of that sort to help to bring awareness in that field? All right, so um, first to clarify, we're, we work in the realm of an NGO, a civil society organization, mm -hmm. where um, we do this part of our outreach work. Um, for the, the company level of it, if you engage us as a company, uh, we don't come cap in hand, we come as a, as a registered company and right. then we, we would work out a plan for you to be able to look at uh, what is your waste streams that you create for your business, mm -hmm. whether you're a construction company, whether you are uh, uh, a, a rental leasing company, you are a supermarket, a food court, any of those things, right. um, we, we would approach that as a basically an exchange of goods and services in other words if you have computers in your business that are not working you're going to call a computer company to come and fix those but if you have a waste management problem you deal with us 
Right. So if you want to dispose of anything, Nimchi, that's Nimchi Farms uh, Services Limited. Um, the work that we do with Project Diverse is strictly, you know, basically outreach work. Okay. Um, so with our with our project proposals, we really look to come and analyze, um, come and walk through your business, see what's going on. Is just businesses or homes and businesses? Um, we have done a few homes, but basically our outreach really is now with as far as education is a lot of sco um, well, schools and businesses. Um, may, I ask, may I ask how big the um, actual organization is? Um, we have uh, we have about uh, six six members that are make up between you know everybody like a little eighteen you know you know who's good with computers who's good with. Uh, solar, because okay. uh, we also have a look an eye towards um, energy creation. Because you have, you know, with, if you have enough, the same stuff that you're throwing away, you can create energy. You know, you can create biomethane and stuff like that. Where you can actually create electricity. And so well, on. these so are all fancy words. I mean, like the average person. That's that's beyond the scope. But that's yeah. when you are dealing with us. If you're coming to us as a corporation, you want some help. You say, look, we have X amount of tons of waste that we're doing that we're creating at our business. We have a factory, we have a warehouse, we're producing this ammonia. Mm -hmm. Can you help us? Mm -hmm. a, we, have a, we have a health concern because of the kind of operation we are. We are a supermarket, we are, you know, whatever. Okay. Um, we will come and help you, you know, streamline your operations. We make sure, you know, obviously a lot, almost businesses in Barbados at a certain level have um, health and safety standards regulations. Okay. But unfortunately for the same thing that you're mentioning, not all these things are addressed throughout the course of the day. Well, are the businesses taking it serious? Are you seeing an increase in business? I will say when when we first started this journey, it was a bit hard to get the discussion across, and that was um, initially uh, seven years ago. Okay. Now, um, and we had some pretty high-level discussions uh, nine years ago um, in 2010, um, mm -hmm. but then we really hit the ground running um, 2012, and then we can, you know, steadily built up. We worked with some construction companies that, because of where they were building um, these houses, um, it was uh, necessary for them to to maintain some high standards of regulation. So when you consider that in the construction of a house, you're going to have close to maybe 70, 80, 90 people, sure, between the work crew, mm -hmm. the plumbers, who's going to install the windows, mm -hmm. the electricians, all that. By the time it's all said and done, over the course that the time that you know some of these houses get built. Um, you're gonna have a lot of people coming on site. Um, skip, skips are not for free. If you're moving a skip once every week because it smells so bad, because there's, you know, all the workers just usually skip. They're cheap time. though. Huh? They're cheap, but they're actually not the most effective way to mm -hmm. to, to um, get, rid of get rid of garbage. This is this is the problem with that. Um, one of the things we don't do here is that we don't recognize a skip as for its usage. So in other places, yeah, everything. everything. So you should have different skips for different um, well, types you of can, bins. You can, well, there are different types of bins. Um, there's um, there's a type of bin um, that actually comes with a lid that you can close down. There's skips that come mm -hmm. that can be closed. Right. Unfortunately, yeah. we have gone for the cheaper model, which is just an open giant basket, eight cubic meters worth of basket. So what happens? When, you, when there's no security guard on site, mm -hmm. when there's no security guard down at Accra Beach, People are going to leave their house wherever it is, and they're going to come and bring a stove, a fridge. Yeah. Yeah. In America, you, you can't really you have to close it. You have to have a close Correct. Skip. It has to be closed. Does anyone in Barbados have close skips? Um, yes. Okay. Um, well, not close skips. They have closed containers, um, which are, are still a, a sizable amount. Mm -hmm. And once again, once you have the, the waste separation, which is you know what we're here to discuss, the management of the waste. Because yeah. throwing everything in one old bin, it's not management of the waste. Okay. It is just throwing that chucking everything in a bin. So you'll find, and then it's not. Once again, if you don't have a camera on it and it's not guarded and there's no security, who's to stop somebody coming and say, "Well, the dog died in the middle of the road. You just come throw it there." Yeah, right there. And then you have a maggot infested mess. You know, sorry for the viewers out there. <laughs> I might get graphic, but what it is is that there's no management of anything there. It's just a, you know, it's like having a hole and everybody throws everything in a hole. Right. Okay. Right. You know, or having a gully. You say, "Well, a gully there is a hole." God make it so I can just try everything in there. So I've I've been in gullies, okay. and it's a bit sad. You'll find you know sheep down there. You'll find um, stoves, fridges, car parts, whole cars. So it's just a culture of nastiness. So what it is, it's it's a misguided culture. Um, it's and this, but I would like everyone to understand. It's just not. It's not just us. This is a worldwide problem. I think sometimes as as a country, we obviously we're not the jet set types, right? So we we're not. Not everybody from our list is from Monaco that has a, a luxury yacht and a luxury plane that says, you know what, I'm going somewhere for lunch. Let's hop on a plane. But, but what we see, we all have a problem. 
it, we see it as a cultural problem because that's the nature of how we are. No, I mean, what we see as a cultural problem, I find that traveling the states or traveling the whole the world, they are enforcing laws. Depends where you go. If you go to New York, if you go to Miami, yes. Yeah, if but you go to certain parts of Louisiana, Alabama, Mississippi, down south, out in Texas, no. uh, back waters, you'll find laws. Stuff, huh? laws. Your laws, but there are also lots of territory you can't cover. So, so like, okay, so so city so laws are, are, are where well, city laws are control city, the city. City laws island. and ordinances are there. Just mm -hmm. just last week, I was watching. Um, you know, we have direct feed of you know uh, news news programs from the states. There was a lady that lives in in a, a, a part of one of the, the you know outskirts of Miami. Just I mean, she doesn't live in the boondocks. She doesn't live in the Everglades. Okay. But she lives in a neighborhood in Miami, and her neighbor has basically a collection going on in his in his in his backyard. So he has an RV. Um, that's a you know motor home. Mm -hmm. We don't have many of those here. Um, he has jet ski. He got exercise bikes. He got four cars parked in the front. All the different things. So she wrote to the city council and said, well, what's going on here? I mean, this thing is just a rat infested mess, whatever. She said, well, actually, the, the, the way the laws were written up is he can claim those as his property, mm -hmm. even though he's not, he, say, he said he's going to get around to fixing them, whatever. Mm -hmm. But there's actually no rules against how many cars he can park in front of his house, right? Mm -hmm. um, the only thing that the city um, ordinance um, forbade him to do is that he had, a, um, like, you know, one of those um, small, um, what do you call it? Containers? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like a 20 by 20, a, a 20 by 10 container that was parked in front. Mm -hmm. So that was the only thing that he wasn't allowed to. But, but, but all the rules that were there, this man had all kinds of mess. It was overgrown. She could hear rustling through it. There was snakes out in there. Just hiding up because he has facilitated, you know, what is basically a vector issue, a health, health vector issue where you have Sad. rats, mice, right. snakes, everything up in there crawling. And it's just over the woman's yard, mm -hmm. just over the fence. So, um, going back to the discussion of, and, and I, I'm very specific on this tone because if we keep playing the, the blame game, we don't get to the solution game. Mm, okay. You know, you look at the problem, but you don't look at the solution. The problem is there. It's a So I, I'll, I'll just say it right now. We are not the only country with this problem. We're not the only culture with this problem. But, right? But we need to look at it. But we need to look at it because us. we need to fix it. Nobody can come and, if you go in the bathroom, you can't expect, you know, if unless you are a baby, mm -hmm. You go. All of us are going past the age room, mommy or daddy. You know where your caretaker will, will wait your bottom for you. But you that's, that's, right. so that's what I'm saying. That there, yes, we well we recognize that there are countries out there mm -hmm. uh, similar to us. They, they to me are taking steps, and it feels to me here that we are taking little to no. And I, when I say that, I don't mean as in a company or your organization. Okay. I know. I'm talking about from a policy level. Um, I remember where we came up with laws, like dumping laws. I'm uh, dumping, dump, <laughs> sorry, dumping five thousand dollars. No, I was by my building. That's been around since like, those Ministry of Health laws have been around since nineteen seventy five. Yeah, I was at my building, and uh, this they have a part in Bridgetown that everybody dumps on. Yeah, Bridgetown. Right behind my building, right in Spray Street. Yes, yes, yes. And I remember this guy. He came and he started to pee on the stuff that was there. Mm -hmm. And I said, "Boss, you can't pee there." And you know his reply was, "What you want me to pee him out?" Seriously? And, you know, that was his reply. And I turned around, all right, well, you're peeing on my building, so what more are you talking about? And he didn't stop peeing. Yeah. You understand? And so there's garbage there, there's waste there. Mm -hmm. But this guy thinks, and then obviously the, the, the alley opposite my building is called Amen Alley, but the, the, the Beijing name is Pissy Alley. Yeah. Because as you go down through there, you have to walk here. Yeah. But no, but no, these, so the culture is one that it doesn't really, I think it's getting out of hand that it doesn't really care. Mm -hmm. And I, 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 I also remember that I was talking to this guy mm -hmm. and he's eating nuts <laughs> and he's just cracking and melting. Another guy is, he just believe in dumping things on the street. They walk snow cone cut. Oh yeah, well, I, I think there's 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 very you would have to be, you know, um, you know, blind not to see the amount of times that we have seen people of all different ages, huh? Of all yeah. different yeah. ages. Yeah, yeah, blame. Can I watch, I mean I, I can give you many examples. For me it, you know, it sets off my spider you know, my, my spider sense start tingling. When I see somebody walking and I'm like three, 
two, one. Oh I, just just drop. I was I, I a couple of weeks ago um by you know, it was a courtesy garage. A guy leaned up on a big courtesy garage sign, drinking a drink. And same thing. I look at it and I said, watch. Three, two, one. And I turn and I heard it boop boop. That particular sound when you hear a pet bottle touch the ground. And I said to myself, you know what? It was a garbage can like ten feet away. So, um, so how do you combat that? You gonna that could be one of your questions, yeah? Yeah, you know, in England. Long uphill battle. No, going back to your other thing about the policy. Um, I always we always advocate. Um, obviously we we're a bit lucky because you know we we do you know we work with schools. Okay. We do some of the work. With you schools. want to name some of the schools that you work with here? Um, we've gone and spoken to St. Stephen's Primary School. We've spoken to um, Harrison College. Okay. Um, we're to approach St. Michael's and St. Mary's. We're coming at you. Um, because they're town schools and we believe that town as a as a urban center mm -hmm. Bridgetown is, is, is just critical. It's critical. What um, are the businesses in Bridgetown? Uh, Bridge the, the businesses of Bridgetown have an important role to play. Um, we are dealing with uh, one of them right now. Um, and we hope to expand that effort. Um, okay. We hope to expand that effort. As always, like I said, when when we started this uh, seven years ago, when we first when we had our first discussions here um, I had a I had a chance. I got very lucky to meet um, with uh, then Mr. Neville Pollard, uh, administrative assistant. Just to you know, there was you know I you know you, at the time you you have a, a, a bright idea. You you talk to somebody. Who says, like I said, right now it feels as if the idea of waste management, all that we're discussing, even you know the the, the higher up discussions of the, the weather and climate change and all that. Do a lot of those things seem a lot closer now than mm -hmm. than just you know seven eight years ago. And so, what we have to understand, and this is going to be a journey. It's but it's going to, you know, it's going to be a each one teach one sort of aspect. This idea that any one person can guarantee that I'm going to come here, I'm going to clean up all the garbage of so Barbados is ludicrous because we all have a part to play, right? I want to um, make a query. Yes. Um, okay. So right now we have the issue in Barbados um, with the collection of garbage in Barbados. Yes. And you know, that is true. Uh, the public, well, I was listening to Donna Brass last day, and there was a serious public outcry, one about the collection of the actual garbage. But then there were, I think someone sent me a voice note with the lady who, um, and she kind of represents uh, the opinions of a lot of people over here, which is sad, where people are saying, even if you're called upon to join in in a collective effort to more or less clean up Barbados, that people are saying, because that they're paying a quote unquote tax for garbage collection, that that is now your job and we are not going to partake, period. Mm -hmm. But that's you know that's like saying, you know, you paid you you paid you paid at the door to come in and affect. So now you gotta entertain me. Having a good time is still up to you, you know. If yeah, you go in there and push up your face and push up your mouth, well, you bank to play as hard as you want you sort of pay money at the door, you know. I still ain't having a good time. So the idea is um, we this thing of getting into the waste management of it is going to take, as you were saying, uh, you have to face the the, 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 the cultural, mm -hmm. you know, eight hundred pound, you know, elephant in the room that says, you know what, we actually are not that clean of a populace as mm -hmm. we think we are. Well, I don't, I, I understand where you both are coming from. Okay, but. My, I've been doing some research as it relates to the environment and clean up and what I saw is that there's a global effort to be able to encourage more environmental friendly policy in terms of government. Yes. Right? So the idea is to have, so they traditionally use stock exchanges. So all companies this on stock exchange will have to put a environmental, social and governance report all into one so it basically stipulates or requires you to report from a company level yes how you best utilize your environmental space mm -hmm. so um, for a company how many trees do you plant in the environment um, how is your risk management practices uh, how friendly are you as it relates to use of annual product and best, I uh, hope best. Are you able to draw on your natural resources outside of the brick and mortar, and you are 
be able to compare the report based on that. Mm -hmm. And if you are able to compare it well enough, you'll get tax incentives and different yeah. um, investment opportunities for companies to be able to make money from what we call waste. Yeah. So, you said what we call them? Waste. Waste. Oh, sorry. Right. So, I think the issue in Barbados is that it is not monetized Correct. to be able to capitalize on mm -hmm. the fact that we have waste. And then the fact that you are not taught about the different areas in which you can make money from waste, mm -hmm. then it just it becomes an ignorant well, problem. So, you are right as uh, you talk about the thought in terms of you don't think that we should be at some level teaching waste management or school. Well, this well, is that, 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 not really on the monetizing yet. Before we have one comment. question. I'll try to comment. Unfor the unfortunate thing is that we regularly speak about instances where we see persons littering, yet we do, yet we do intervene and correct these persons from, yet do we intervene and correct these persons when they are lit when littering occurs? We only have a culture of littering, but a culture of silence. We don't, sorry, only have a culture of littering, but a culture of silence. We should all make it a habit to speak up in the moment when occurring. Now, um, I am particularly guilty of that. So I'm the kind that? of person, oh yeah, I, I speak on it every, every pe my friends know not to, like around me that they don't even try that. But they're wrong. Right? Uh, so, um, not everybody is in that same thing. But no, remember I made it, they're wrong, I don't know if you're not coming, point. If, you don't, if you're not coming in, I don't know if you're going to make the comment that when I said to the guy, hey, you peeing on my prop, you peeing, I didn't even identify as my property first. Yeah, you peeing on a, on a building where you're, I hate telling me he will pee in my, if I want he pee in my mouth. This is a woman, so, young boy. This is a woman, man. And I mean like, an older man, probably 60 plus. Mm -hmm. So there are times that you do speak up, but when you speak up, people are aggressive. Yeah, people think that what they're doing is right. Yeah. And you feel, all you could do is feel for a moment is that I will go to prison for that person. For that person. So you do feel, <laughs> No, no, I, 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 I think not that way because you telling me, then the, the on top right, I said the worst part was you were peeing on my building. You were not peeing on just any property. You understand? Know because but the debris, the, the debris is there, but it's not the debris is not on my property. The debris is on the other person's property. But you're peeing on my property, and they're telling me that hey, you you would invest a pee in my mouth or whatever. So these things are frustrating that you do want to tell people about it. I just want to say how welcome to Peter Wickham. Yes, yeah, so as Kimor was saying, um, and I want to welcome uh, the man in the corner. I want the pleasure to meet you. Um, and uh, you all touched, you touched on it earlier. Mm -hmm. The idea of policy. No, um, first of all, we need to have a multi pronged approach, a mm -hmm. multi level approach. So, um, I often give the example that when, um, when cell phones were 20 years ago, only bank managers and upper level management of most companies have cell phones. Mm -hmm. Now because of you know the increase in you know cheaper consumer goods, everyone has access. In fact Barbados ranks very highly in the world, like we're top fifteen or I think we're number twelve maybe, um, as far as accessibility to the internet and mm -hmm. so on. Um, going to a very interesting thing you were saying to my where it is very important you have policy that supports mm -hmm. supports the efforts of people to being able to monetize Something as crucial as we as management, but, but at the same time, before before the second thing, though, before you go any further, um, I remember specifically two different government projects. Well, actually, sure. three, speak up. Sorry, I remember specifically three government projects to deal with waste management in Barbados, mm -hmm. and one of them I know for sure was going to more or less monetize that waste. Mm -hmm. So, um, but you also have to tread carefully not to cross you on that one. Mm -hmm. Is that um. It has been recognized by entities like the UN and the New World Bank and so on that um, having access to uh, proper waste management is up there with having access to water. I agree, but let me <laughs> mention the three projects. Um, number one um, was the Greenland landfill, idea which came about years ago, and you know the facility was built but just never used. Uh, well, it was, it was, it was. Um, they had some issues and problems, and they did go ahead and try to use it mm -hmm. with the with the current with the still existing um, practice. Uh, you would have still had to leach it because there was a tear in the membrane that would have still caused some leaching into the water table. Right. Well, before we further, that that project. Then um, I remember the most recent one would be the 
What is the year in the end? SBRC? Not SBRC. Well, SBRC is one, which is currently in operation. Mm -hmm. And then the, the one we already go to Barbados. Oh, oh, the KL. KL the project, yes. The incineration project, which yes. is funny because... Um, and, that, and, that, and that project, based on what I had heard about it... Would have saddled us with a lot of debt. Well, it would have saddled us with a lot of debt, but you were, you were basically taking the garbage and using it to make waste, energy, waste, waste, waste energy. energy. Waste energy. So, I mean, yes, you would have had debt, but in one hand, but in the next hand, um, it would have produced energy, which mm -hmm. the hope was, I, I, I if I'm correct, the hope at the given time by the government was to reduce the amount of oil that we import into Barbados um, for usage with, by the Barbados Electric Power. And so obviously you would bring down, you would increase the amount of foreign reserves that you have on hand and reduce the amount you actually send out. Now, yeah, as we but could, it was a capital but intensive it, project. It, um, yeah. I Killed had the a, I think I would assume that most people got to read it, but the, the contract was online, they could have gone and read it. Yeah, it, was it was probably one of the most one-sided contracts in the history of contracts. Right, <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know, 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 I never said that I agreed with you. It never took off. Oh, so you didn't agree with it? No, I didn't agree with it. I'm just saying, we were talking about So, Barbados is not big enough, Barbados, quite frankly, is not big enough to support waste the energy incineration at that size of level. Um, and once again, the, the, the way that plan was, the, the contract was, was worked out, would have been, basically we've been giving them money um, and not getting the full return, not neither on the electricity, almost basically out of all the, the, the obligations on there fell back on, you know, GLD government about it. So uh, it, was, it was not the way to go. But the question I want to ask then, um, that project clearly was not the way Yes. yes. So that was one extreme that right. we said. Right. We right. said no. That right. project clearly was not yet. Before. Right. But the problem still remains. But could it, could it be on, done on a small on oh, small on. scale? Hold on. The problem still remains. We'll get there. The problem still remains. They still have the garbage piling up in Barbados today. And even after the sanitation service started to go and take up the garbage, you still just take it and straight to the and straight to the and you dump it and you come yeah. back it. So eventually. You gotta find something to do with all this garbage out for you not the landfill. Well, that's what we're here. But here, but question. Yes. Could it be? Could do, does your company take garbage from we the landfill? We're, we're not in the. We we help a lot as much as we can um, for the amount of people that reach out to us. Divert a lot of the waste that's going on, especially the organic waste. Composting is our thing. Yeah. Um, from going there. Are you the only one in this space? Uh, no, there's there's other entities um, that operate at different levels um, that we we deal in the knowledge aspect of bringing as much information as possible to it. Um, that gives us the multiplier effect. What we can't do ourselves, others can do as well as far as getting the information. If uh, I'll, I'll put it this way, for the reported tonnage of waste that we produce in bodies every day, mm -hmm. um, given statistical data that we have, um, a certain quantity you know, in, for our you want sharing, some of that data now? Um, well, it ranges between 50 and 64, 65% that we have mm -hmm. that our of our waste stream is actually organic waste. So think, um, you know, the newly introduced um, uh, serving food containers to all the food scraps. That's where a lot of the water weight is. Now, a lot of that can be used back in agriculture because once you take that, you uh, um, introduce that into what is a aerobic digestion, aerobic composting, um, you can find that with, ears, with air, words. so you take the you take the material, and I'm going to break up the, the goodies to show everyone where you mix a certain quantity of carbon material, which is just think, you know, wood chips and dried stuff, dried mm -hmm. leaves and so on, um, cardboard and paper, and you mix that with um, a certain quantity of nitrogen rich stuff, which would be your fresh cut ends, peel ends. Um, you, you end the chicken skin and whatever, you mix those up and through a process that requires a certain amount of turning over every number of days and you know uh, you have uh, various uh, classes of bacteria, thermophilic being the number one of them, thermophilic as in they create heat, okay. thermal, um, they break down the material as in a way that would occur out in mother nature, right? Okay. When you see, when you think of a 
a heavily wooded area that when you go there it has a lot of leaves that have been falling no one comes to weed whack or just take the leaves out all those leaves now as they break down over the course of time to various processes you know with the mixture of rainfall and the, the, the flora and fauna and fungi and microbial activity it breaks down to become a very nice rich new soil um, this is actually called the completion of the nitrogen cycle where everything that comes out of the earth has a chance to go back to the earth in that cycle those of a particular generation would know and remember these things because that's what they did um, in the respect that you know the the enzo enzo grains of rice that you didn't you didn't eat and everything go out to these chickens or the, the food scraps would go out to me and so they get transferred from that mm -hmm. to helping the protein of the pig or the, the chicken and so on and grow and then when you have the chicken bones and everything you take those you could ground them up they make bone meal and put to your tomatoes to give lovely lovely sweet skins that make them nice so these are all part of the nitrogen now this is this was something that was done throughout history well I have a question how can the average Barbadian to be who just got a lot of garbage in the house or outside the so what you call garbage is funny is there is what we call garbage is the wholesale work everything that we've finished consuming okay but here's the part you're not going to go to the bathroom you might go to the bathroom with this or toilet paper and use that for the toilet paper for what it's for you're not going to use this to do what the toilet paper does because you know this is a phone this has an application true you are not going to you know there's many things where we know where things go there's a time and a place for everything so the fact of the matter is when you are finished a meal right mm -hmm. uh, or when you finish your consumption the same that we would all recognize that if you catch a van on the south coast road and you have a drink fresh out of chef mm -hmm. and you saw um, or you know you have a cup in your hand you have a juice pack once you finish drinking it the right-minded person will say well let me look for a garbage can and put that in there okay. it's not you finish and you throw it on the ground well you know stick it in there for a minute um Kimar I will ask you a question because you're the well I would consider the resident economist right what is the economic value of recycling to Barbados well as it still right now, I think the person is still trying to a lot of money. Um, a, a good example, a good a good example right now. Um, we we hardly recycle. Or we have a metal a metal industry or a metal trade mm -hmm. industry, but um, we we have guys who they run oil in their trucks and what's not picking up old stoves and washing machines and yeah. old cars and what's not but still there's a significant amount of persons who either don't know about it or they, just leave, that is very true. or they just leave the waste there for the traditional players mm -hmm. but still uh, a lot of people can't find jobs right now yeah so my thing is that people were but what jobs would for example for, for metal or for glass all these are what you call garbage is just when when they left whatever store that they were purchased from, they were and you think that you wanted and you gave good hard currency to buy it. Mm -hmm. Once you finish consuming and it has a glass bottle, well that glass bottle got some here. But top the top has a has a they, so they all so it's not just the metal, but the, the jobs now are just hauling jobs or collection jobs. Do you think this the mark some of the other jobs that possibly could come along? Well, as I said from glass if you if you could uh, not break it down but use certain element because um glass is basically a compound of different element not uh, and too scientific but mm -hmm. um you got sense beside you <laughs> yeah well there's a certain quantity oh, so for okay so for paper um paper loses um the binding element after a while so you will see most most papers are made out of recycling um they get about as high as 70 percent then they always have to reintroduce a certain quantity of virgin pulp Okay. right back into it but glass and metal are uh, especially glass are pretty much in infinitely recyclable where once you melt it back down once you crush it and melt it back down you have the um the input um the calorific input for the amount of heat that you have to do to you know that's an expenditure you have to create that heat from somewhere well and but you know Barbados has natural gas so we probably could have a gas a glass smelter or so on but you're talking about developing the trade skill which if you look at it in an economic sense those are the new creative jobs that you could be looking for. Um, I just looked at, a, I just had a, 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 a saw another report on a lady that um, is making 
glass of artwork and she takes the glass and she smelts it and she she goes on she does all these you know private you know uh, by commission artworks and so on so there's there's obviously that element but you can only do that if you get the clean glass no one ain't going through no broken glass bottle and said there's a garbage bag that mm -hmm. Kimar put out yesterday to go and get that glass out to clean it and wash off the shot you know what I mean so the idea of separating the waste streams mm -hmm. is what creates that positive um, net value so if I have clean plastics, then we can take it and we can ship it abroad, you know, by the ton or by the container. Right. Somebody pay me for it. Is, if is, it's contaminated, is it, it's It's interesting, though, that you talk about shipping it abroad. And Kimar, you could come in here now. Um, you know, um, China and the whole of East Asia have um, more or less said, we're no longer taking any boys' garbage. Yes. Right? So you could... Pick out all the clean glass you want. You can do all the separation you want in Barbados, and so there are two issues that come into well, play. Well, that's one reason right. why they stopped no, that on. is because they were oh. getting too much dirty stuff. Oh, but you got two issues that come into play. You can separate the garbage, and you actually can export it. So you just separate it and go out there put it aside, all right. And then if you actually try to do anything with it, um, whilst you may feel within yourself that you are doing the right thing by separating your garbage. What is the environmental impact now of you actually trying to smelt down this material? Because I know that there have been other persons in Barbados who have tried to bring in machinery to actually um, to, 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 to grind up metal and I guess to deal glass and that sort of stuff. But then there have been serious objections by the public and people cited health um, grounds saying. I don't, I don't think it was a. a as incorrect, the, when the guy brought in the machine to do grain the metal, mm -hmm. it was from the standpoint that he didn't get the, the, like, the permission he needed to do that. But there were people who, who, who said that it would cause him? Not necessarily because uh, you're going in metal, you're not, it's not flammable, it's not, uh, mm -hmm. you're not going in uh, chemical, okay, you're going in medical, on. so uh, metal, but uh, the person never got the person has the equipment there sitting down, mm -hmm. never got a chance to have the equipment in operation. Mm -hmm. But it will cut down. Um, as I always say, that is that we have not, I think that we need to be thought this waste management thing, and I don't think we've taken it seriously. I think that we, that's that's I would agree with that we don't take it seriously at different levels. Okay. I all people often tell us we well, have to take it to the kids. I'm like, cool, I'm taking it to the kids. But the you know, we've even gone as far as making a, a, a little children's book and a compost but activity. Book. I think as it is now, as it is now, as it is now, a majority of persons in their home have, let's say, one garbage can. Whether if you want to call it I to the garbage can. I don't buy it first of all. Well, yeah, well, there's a one that may have a garbage can, yeah. they put a bag in it, whatever. Uh, and they drop everything inside that bag. Yeah. To get, to get the agents mm -hmm. to got multiple bags, let's say one with plastic, one with bottles, one with whatever, they, I don't think they want to spend the time to do it because they can just like, put everything in one bag. I think they got obviously some, some kind of incentive. Okay, and and then not only that, now, now we have uh, yeah. taxes, more taxes on mm -hmm. depending on um, well, internal sanitation or whatever. Yeah. Um, because uh, I pay everything in there and you can't, oh, I pay for it. Well, that's but if you got incentives well, let me, let me to reduce those costs, well, let me then that's it's where... It's not going to get any less. So we're getting paid, a, we have to pay $1.50 a day. A day. Right. So wait, let me add to that this on what this that that ties in then. Um Wazas is Waza Gu is saying, I remember when pet uh, plastic bottles was introduced, the drinks were supposed to get cheaper, but the prices got more expensive expensive. All drinks in Barbados should be should be in glass, not plastic. But you know years ago yeah, all glass. drinks were in glass. glass. Yeah. yeah. I, I I went into my building for the first time and the first thing I saw was those old coke bottles that sprinkled. I was I was I was gonna tell them about how much I you gotta give, go give me one then boy. Yeah, yeah. That, that those are our our relics. I should have outside some boy relic them are gone. No no you should uh, give me one boy. Say when it say when I need to say I have a question for the guests this evening. <laughs> what are your views of what are your views there's more people are putting what are your views about waste the energy. The last administration had plans for a waste energy plan the, uh, that would see a reduction in our energy bill. While solving the problem of an overgrown landfill, what are your views on the construction of a waste energy plan? Uh, Waza is also saying Barbies need to be able to recycle even all metals. Well, 
Yeah. Yeah. So to hang the first. Wait, we're gonna also add that here in the UK I have five pins. Alright, so here you go, here they you go. They collected. Don't want to touch one that. Go ahead and yeah, go so for the first, for the yeah. first, um, I am, I am not a, a supporter of wasting energy in the present um, duration. How it's presented to us as far as taking everything, I think it's a step backwards. For the last, um, for the last the administration, for you to me, they were way off the chart. Okay, they had, they were well intentioned, mm -hmm. but they were way off the chart as far as to what was the best way forward. And yeah, then with the second we 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 tomorrow we'll have to go on. Wow. And you're oh, sorry. What? You finished? Really? And you had a second. There was a second question with regards to the five bodies. I mean, he said five bins, but he, the same way he said bodies need to be able to recycle even all metals. So yes. Yeah. Yeah, we can. We on but recycling. Um, we, we, if we're going to look, let's take semantics. Recycling means taking something from one state. Mm -hmm. Consumption. It goes through the consumption or the, the processor, and then you turn it into something else. How much of that can we actually do? Mm -hmm. Is one question I would like to ask viewers. I'd love to hear them chime in to see what they what they perceive would be interesting to to, to you know use them as a summing board, mm -hmm. and then um, and the ability of later on we'll discuss one thing that we can okay. recycle. Okay, go ahead. Right. <coughs> two two points. I know at, at the University of West Indies we have four bins, mm -hmm. right? One is for glass, one is for plastic. I can't remember the other one. Follow instruction. And it's for you. <laughs> I would say yesterday. <laughs> but when I get to All the time? when I get to the plastic part, like the bottle still should not be soup because it sort of gets full. Mm -hmm. But and, and then then there's a separate open one. But how the garbage can is constructed is it is closed off and just has a hole big enough for black. Oh, yeah. right. You can't push any more. So you can't push garbage in. Which is a good, which is a good step. But then, um, trying to get that implemented on a government level, then you know, you know, the money and this and that, and whole different issues, right? But I think that's what he was touching on before. You came that the the skips are open, right? So anybody shut anything in them. So right. 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 right, but just to show you, I just well, want to show. All right. That's why like the fact of we have like a lot of coconut shells here, right? To me, those are recyclable. You can make cocoa yeah, pee. This, this is to me. This is just um, ignorance, not ignorance in the fact of knowing and lost oh, economic I'm opportunity. Yes, right? because um, I know from being in agriculture that um, coconuts usually make mulch, which yeah. is good for fertilizer yeah. and what's not. So for all of these guys who um, have coconut businesses and on the base and dumping, to me they're missing out on another out, they're, they're stream. They're throwing out thousands money. and thousands and thousands of dollars with discarding coconut Correct. shells. And and there's no opportunity. So for me, it is just that we are not educated of the opportunities, opportunities that yeah. are provided, mm -hmm. and uh, it, the government can't do all. Mm -mm. So it takes uh, persons yeah. like George and Jermaine and the man who sure. who has this knowledge to come out and and try to engage it. But as we can see, when we try to do. The right thing, people who are ignorant are giving really push back. So that's when then you have to then get government involved to say, well, hey, that's where policy comes in to back you to, yeah. to back up the yeah. efforts of, you know, the convertees. I was, you know, after, you know, after right. that man left, I said to myself, I sorry they take a video here, a post on Facebook, because mm -hmm. you if people remember you then. Yeah. So I'll just take a picture, yeah. but you know, let me see that you need we, to we, we are we are living in ever evolving and changing times. You know, there's, there's a lot of things and you know whether it's technology or um, the the world that we live in as far as how much more connected it is as compared to 50 years ago or you know when you know generations of patients left here after the war to go and seek their fortune and all that. Um, so now here we are in this global community, this global village where we can really still learn a lot of you know best management practices and, and, and learn to look to apply them. Like I, I, I really am serious one of my major talking points when I talk to different groups and, and entities and so on is I always remind people, you know, it's not over till it's over. You know, we still have a lot to, to, to you know, maybe this is our great battle, you know, the talk about, you know, World War II was the great war, but, you know, maybe this is our, and it doesn't have to be a battle, mm -hmm. it's about winning over the skeptics and helping people to understand. And we, we at Life Earth, we have our own little way, um, you know, we, we discuss a behavior management approach where we, we help people to identify what are the risks. Um, we help them to identify their own ability to do something. Um, we look at what are the social norms 
um, what actions they can take, and then you know th th then eventually leads them to a, a level of self regulation. Mm -hmm. I mean, when we were when we were all you know under the age of one one and a half, we all did that like that man. We peed where you know we we all did it wherever we wanted to. You well, know what I mean? Question then you're you're more than you don't in public. Uh, right. <laughs> the, question, the question I want to ask. Um, previously, the money had asked if you think a smaller version of the BS energy plant would work in Barbados. And uh, and I said yes. In in, the, in well, in the right itinerary, uh, uh, offering an iteration of it. So you can have waste to energy where you can take organic waste, mm -hmm. um, and you can put it in sealed vessels, and um, all with all the necessary engineering. I, I did not bring some of that in, you know, science with me. I didn't want to bore anyone. But you can have uh, through another process called anaerobic digestion, which is anaerobic means without air. Um, okay. with the introduction of certain specific enzymes which are basically bacteria proteins that can you know continue to digest the stuff mm -hmm. um, they will create um, lipids which are basically a fancy word for oils and fats basically and they will just and they will become combustible okay. so you, you could you, you capture them you have a container you have a closed container let's say this is the closed container as an example um, put we it, put it up. We, we put we put the inside you know put inside here. There's a, a feeder trap that we put all the waste, the household waste, mm -hmm. all the this food skins and the, the chicken bone and everything. Everything goes in this. Imagine this thing is a big like water silo thing that you see like down by where they keep oil and stuff like down by President Kennedy. So, right? so, so, so you it goes in there, but then you have the necessary. That can work for that can work for like the whole of Barbados where. Well, you know, they, they have some that are actually mobile, they're modular, in other words, you can build them up to size, so they, you know, there's some that will provide you with, um, you know, 500 watts, and one, one megawatt, and five megawatts, 10 megawatt plants, and they're modular, so when you increase, you just, you know, you call the engineers up, the, you know, company who puts these things in, and they can expand the plant. No. However, you mm -hmm. still need clean waste streams, and by clean waste streams, I mean, you can't have plastic in there. Okay. No, the question I wanted to ask. When you said, um, you said one megawatt, ten megawatt. These you call it some different wattages just now. Yeah, five megawatt, ten right. megawatt. Yeah. yeah. How much? Well, any, any, you know, how much? How much energy it takes to power Barbados? <laughs> and that's that's no. It's it would be interesting to find out because if we um if if we, if we're looking to commercialize it, right? If we're looking to commercialize um garbage. Or I used to make it um, monetize. monetize garbage, mm -hmm. and you just stated that you can actually use the garbage to produce not the garbage, the organic, the organic waste. The organic waste. Well, the garbage is when it's all clumped up, right? But when you put your I, bed springs I, I, in there, I, 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 I your old version. nappies, your clothes, everything, no, right? But I was talking clean waste streams. Clean I know it sounds uh, oxymoronic to say clean and waste streams mm -hmm. in the same because we all have one vision of it, mm -hmm. nasty garbage truck. Yeah. But the idea it is it is paramount for us. Oh, well, I think somebody made a comment to was, separate. Was I saying that now nah, that will give off toxic fume and smell bad for mouth? Um, what are you talking about? Um, he's I I guess he's thinking worst case scenario. I had the pleasure of meeting um a couple from Dominica okay. uh, three years ago, and they were doing a small biomethane project using. I just want to sell We just want to sell out the Rob Tom. We, I don't know MP 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 Rob Tom was also <laughs> locked on. Uh, we had earlier um um I think Council General Neville Greenwich as well, mm -hmm. so from overseas. So we have some people locked So on. one of the things is, um, as I was saying, we mm -hmm. so I there was a pilot project going on in Dominica. Okay. Um, where they were using um, pig manure, pig manure, pig, pig manure, oh, pig manure, manure. Okay. pig manure to create biomethane, and with the biomethane, so you imagine a pig stall mm -hmm. and a couple of pigs in there, and uh, then the manure is collected. Yeah. It is introduced into another stall that is covered over with nothing more than a, I think it was a two, three millimeter uh, plastic barrier, mm -hmm. semi transparent. Yeah. Um, closed off at that one point with a tube, you know, and the tube is obviously sealed, you know, duct tape and everything. So and this was just a small pilot project done at a pig farm in Dominica. Uh -huh. And they were making natural gas. Okay, well, no, you can do with pigs. Um, so if you make natural gas, you can now put water there, steam, run a turbine. You got electricity. Eureka! Here we are. Okay. You know, so and you know, uh, so yes, it can smell. Obviously, anything you know done the wrong way 
can be a bit screw up. The same thing with your metal recycling. If you get a metal grinder, obviously you're going to have metal shards and you're going to create with that kind of... That can blow in the atmosphere. That can go in the atmosphere. The, the, the thing is with all of these things, management must be present. So there, there, there are international guidelines, specifications for whole, all of these operations that we're discussing can be run. And where they're run properly and effectively with okay. the right feeder streams, whether it's metal. So you're going to put a whole car in there, but you're going to take the batteries out. You're going to take the radio out. You're going to you know, drain it of its fluids. You're not going to put a whole car in an in, in industrial uh, metal grinder like some of the ones that you can see overseas, which are phenomenal. I mean, literally, they take whole cars and just throw them in. And it's just like, you can just think wood chips, but with metal. Engine block, everything. Well, not engine block, but basically the whole most of the car. Mm -hmm. But you you strip it of the you know things that are going to be yeah. you know you drain the fluids, all those things. So anything that's done correctly by the standards of the best management practices. Let's not even care about whether it's international. We don't like to do international things. Just do things like how they should be done properly. Who's your question? Let me get no, there. Let me get to Mark question. In regards to uh, what you and me would mention oh. about the pigs, mm -hmm. um, I know we are not looking at medicinal marijuana. I've obviously got my entail growing and whatever. I saw a video recently, whereas uh, I think this was in the U.S. Mm -hmm. Whereas they were growing, there was there were green houses growing marijuana, mm -hmm. and they pick up the leaves, whatever. But it leaves a lot of garbage after. It's all garbage. So what? In terms of stems or whatever, don't use the roots. This is our just basic green right. green waste. What they were then doing was mm -hmm. taking that waste from the marijuana mm -hmm. and feeding the pigs. Oh, and then they found that the pigs were actually of a better quality, taste better, look better, and okay. that kind of thing. All right. <laughs> the pigs? Yeah. yeah. The pigs were just... Go ahead, my, Mark. My question stems from... You talk, uh, we're speaking about waste generally, but what about water? I know we are a water-scarce country right now, mm -hmm. and the rural parish usually suffer with lack of water channeling to those areas. I personally believe that the lack of maintenance in our gullies and helping to block up and people building near the waterways and that type of stuff too is, is helping in that regard. So what can we do to recycle water so those persons can get water coming to their house? Mm -hmm. uh, even if it's through a diesel plant or, or even if it's trying to, to tap into the gullies even to make them more clear where we could have right. uh, more portable water coming through. And that's, that's a big, that's a heavy one, that's a big one. But here, here, here's mm -hmm. how we bring that right back around and stay still on course with waste management. So you identify correctly that the, the gully system of Barbados is very important. We have um, various ways, you know, we you know we all know Barbados is a coral island. Mm -hmm. um, so obviously if you have a lot of dumping because people are not getting the necessary service and people are just looking to throw it in the biggest skip or the biggest gully yeah, that they can yeah. find, the biggest hole in the ground they can find close to the house. You are risking contaminating good water by throwing in whatever they throw in. So once again, we understand why waste management is important, mm -hmm. right? Um, and separation of waste is important because once you can, let's do a thought experiment. A what? A thought experiment. Where a thought, thought experiment, thought where thought. Okay, use yeah. your imagination, okay? Right, where okay. you can <laughs> <laughs> once you load, once you unload the app for that, let's go. Mm -hmm. So, you have a situation where we are going to imagine all the gullies in Barbados are now rid of their existing waste. There's no more waste going in there, and you know, we've, we've employed all the necessary means. Mm -hmm. You know, all the civil society organizations, NGOs, BDF, police force, everybody and their mother goes down, we all clean them up. Mm -hmm. So now we have the clean waterways, the traditional wa waterways where the water flows, and there's still parts of Barbados where water flows year round. Yeah. Um, we are there now to be able to repristine these areas, um, reintroduce the planting that is, is traditional to them um, as, as micro ecosystems yeah. where the monkeys are going to stay down in there, they're going to become tourist attractions. Mm. Earn you the US dollar because people want to walk through our beautiful gullies with tall trees that stem to break up mm -hmm. and so on. So far, so good. Everybody's still with the thought experiment, right? Yeah. Now, the water that flows there, um, what's going to happen now? You can also now start to employ certain elements of damming certain parts to then increase, you know, capture, captioned water mm -hmm. that's there that can then now have knock on effects. You have water reservoirs. Not to mention all the other aspects that if you get all the gully stream, all the gully ways of Barbados clean. But Barbados, is, Barbados actually has sufficient water that you could create more dams? Hmm? 
Um, depend on who you speak to. It's certain uh, well with water authority or who have who has experience with um, you know different. Uh, like busy on those guys. And I'm talking people you know old school guys that would have worked with Barbados Water Authority 20, 30, 40 years ago that would know of old catchment areas and mm -hmm. you know no no parts of. Um, you know, Turner's Hall and you know, Air Mill and places that all oh, for Hackett and Split will tell you, oh, it's right here year round. You know, drought or no drought, we always got water. Um, but is it sufficient for them? Huh? Is it sufficient for them? That's well, the that's the thing. When you when you dam off water um, for some situation like that, there is what you do is you can prepare and prep it for situations where um, anything from um, small catchment areas that can change the ecosystem in which they're running through mm -hmm. um, and also you still have the reservoir so in time when, when do when do, if you design it properly when they have overflow you can have different catchment areas along the way that help so because the water is flowing year round whether it's a trickle or it's a full-on you know torrent you have a full water flow now if you design yeah, around it yeah it's found on that right I know the tree houses this tree which is miles 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 long mm -hmm. but Across the river plantation, you know, there's a gentleman who actually dumb off the water. And that did that affect rivers? Seriously. I mean, it's actually affecting farmers seriously. And, and, and I have a farm in river, so you know, Charlie is very close, but going through significant issues with water and what's not. Now, damming is okay if you can use the dam for a, I would say, a public purpose so people can benefit. However, um, Gentlemen uses it for things like recreational boating and, and things and like recreational that. Recreational what? Boating. Boating. Okay. Right. So you can sit down in a boat and go around and shoot, shoot up ducks and that type of stuff. But <laughs> nevertheless, so um, in terms of water flowing, I, I believe water should flow free and naturally. But then the issue comes with it property rights and if the water is coming across your land and you you may feel that you have the ability to dam it, right? Which is which is okay if the dam is made. No, I'm talking about to things that would be you would you would study the water course. You have the you know the, the necessary uh, engineers, uh, environmentalists, and so on. The, 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 the people who are looking at the problem from different points of view mm -hmm. um, that would also look to see the effectiveness of where you would want to put basically an up. Basically, think of a dam as an uphill, yeah, or upstream water catchment. Okay. That's all it is. The fact that you implement it there is a different story. Mm -hmm. Right? Now if you do it where, like I said, once it gets to a certain point or there's a, a, a valve a valve opening that allows you can do micro um, power generation mm -hmm. where you can still create some levels of, because the water flow is constant, small motor, you implement it in there and the necessary, you know, type of housing that's built a certain way so you can open and close and create necessary powers when there's overflows when you can maintain a, a minimum water flow for downstream, yeah, right? So you're not just choking off your water. You're still allowing it to flow, but you're also saving some for high times, where, where the times where high temperature and lower rainfall. Mm -hmm. Although this does not affect everywhere. So for example, um, you have the old, con the, the Constitution River. Yeah. Starts in, starts in St. Joe's River, starts in St. Joseph. Mm -hmm. It then runs all the way through Barbados. In, a, in some case, it goes, I believe it starts it starts to go south, southeast, and then it cuts back and goes west towards town. Cuts through places like Charles Road Bridge and then comes mm -hmm. to the Bell and so on and so forth. Um these are things to be studied. Okay. Uh, re uh, and revamped. So what you can do is when you're looking at the environment, the, the, the length and breadth of Barbados and you're looking at your waterways with a critical eye, you look at your gullies with a critical eye. And you see, actually, we do get a certain amount of water. We may not get constant water, but we get certain amount. But we get certain amount. A lot of people will know this, and this is just plain observation. You don't have to be a scientist to, to be observant. How much time? How many times do we see it rain, and all that rain just goes straight up to sea? A lot. I know they know they are um, thinking they hold down they're building that um, because of the flood. Yes. So that's so one. even so more so one. You look at the West Coast. Coast. You look at the West Coast and you look at some of the, 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 the more um, upscale properties. Uh, you'll see situations where, you know, through proper engineering, you know, chapeau to them, you know, hats off to them, they're able to create water catchment areas that are big enough to be, you know, 
lakes are approaching an acre, eight and a half, mm-hmm. which is not a bad reservoir of water to have if you're going to go through, you know, a dry season. Um, you know, we always we always like to treat dry season like it's some kind of biblical event that like we didn't know it was coming. Mm-hmm. It comes every year, folks. Come on now, come on now. The past the readers. Is that not true? It comes every year. Every year we have a certain amount of dry season. Yeah. And then we're gonna have the rainy season. No. With all the talk of climate change, mm-hmm. dry season may stretch over a little bit more. Yeah. And dry and the rainy season may contract a little bit. But once again, this is not, you know, New South Wales, Australia where they went, I think about six, seven years without rain, with like barely a lick of rain. Out back Victoria out back Victoria and out back New South Wales. There were farmers that were going through, you know, high rates of suicide and Lord knows what else. Financial bankruptcies. I mean, people that just could not maintain a farm. You had acres and eight, hundreds of acres of land because Australia is gi- ginormous. Mm-hmm. You know, gigantic and enormous at the same time. It is that big. And you got yes, sir. Yes, places with hundreds of acres that not a lick of rain ain't falling. Mm-hmm. What was once a stream, a, a creek, a river, was that? done. You ain't see rain since this 2019, you ain't see rain since 2012. Whoa, that's sad. Now imagine that as a condition. We don't have that. We have tropical, like I said, we um, we like to act as if rain has not been in Barbados, like the Sahara Desert. Mm-hmm. That is simply not the case. What we need to do is have, once again, a critical eye mm-hmm. to re-examine what is the natural landscape we have, um, look at our water systems, our riverways, our storage uh, capacity for uh, you know underwater caverns and catchment areas and so on, and you know do what needs to be done to to restore them. Because like, uh, I think, like for example, when we have let me show like a hurricane or uh, we got Bowers, which is lower rain, mm-hmm. and the country usually floods in matter of minutes. That's a lot of water that can be saved. Yes, some form. So of I, I have always had a big. I I I, I have this. Um, once again, my thought experiment. Um, this is an individual video display, which is you know just my imagination that lights up. Um, I like to imagine a future Barbados where we have lakes and ponds all over the place. I see the of, right of our construction, but properly done, that will help. Once again, having taken a critical eye to rain water flows. Well, you see that? You see that heavily in Miami. If you're flying over oh my to gosh. Miami. Oh, it is so much gas for water, gas material. Yes, yeah. 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 There's, there's official ones where you can see that the circular water. Yeah, so that they basically use that thing to keep stirring the water. So but then it's not that separate. Like if there's, but there's some that actually just water. Yeah, there are water Holland, houses between. Holland, yes, Heller, Holland, Holland makes excellent use of um, artificial canals. Canal, that's correct. All through that crisscross the whole entire nation. But the other question to you would be, um, when we talk about all of this. Um, <coughs> Waste the energy and waste management, uh, composable and all of this. Uh, it co- it is a very pricey uh, I see what task. Saying. Yeah, but it is a very rewarding task in the end. Yeah, if you see Barbados taking waste management seriously, and your company or your organization was to approach government. Yeah. And private sector because I always like to leave everything on government doing. No, I, be, I believe in a, a what would department. be a price tag if you I don't know if you've done it, that you would say to bring the Barbados to that place that you can grow from. Because you, you might not be able to do it all, but you can grow from. Right. What would you think would be a good quote unquote figure mm-hmm. that we could say if we were to raise okay. X amount? We would bring, even if it's billions, but I just want to hear if it was a good, uh, good evening as well. Event, we would, what do you think would be a good price tag to bring Barbados to that waste and waste energy, fossil fuel, whatever, whatever good to the you era, more we, eco friendly, sustainable Barbados? Yes, and yeah. we know that our prime minister has been talking heavily on climate change and a number of yeah. issues. But if you were in front of her and said, Prime Minister, look, I need a dollar and I can make things right from there, what would be your price tag? <laughs> um, <laughs> put a real economic figure. To put a real economic it could be it could be it could be predicted to proceed, however. Um 
can I have more time to ask the question? <laughs> yeah, but I'm not. No, what it is is um, I, I don't believe in price tags like that. Um, not everything that counts can be counted, mm -hmm. and not everything that can be counted counts. Because you can take a problem and throw a lot of money at it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, one of the examples I use in my talks is that, you know, you could take, you know, um, a guy off the street in New York and walk him into Emporio Armani, put a brand new suit on him. Mm -hmm. Guess what? Straight off his feet. Straight back yeah, because you have not spent the time. You have not. Mm -hmm. You haven't. You didn't shave him. You didn't do the makeover. You didn't clean his nails. You didn't cut him. You didn't do any. You didn't, you didn't refurbish his mind. You didn't refurbish his mind. You didn't see what led him down that path in the first place. You have not gone through all these steps. But without so that, they, they, they this is you cannot have a man, you cannot have a manufactured result. I'll put it. I'll, I'll I'll twist this question on you. What does it cost us not to do it? Um, a lot I of money. A lot of money. <laughs> we, you know, we lose. Um, I remember I was reading. I was reading the um, Global Waste Management Outlook. It's a kind of a scary book to read because it's a uh, you're looking at the problems of Barbados but multiplied by you know the you know 190 yeah. something you know for the, around the world mm -hmm. and you see graphic pictures of what's going on, what's missing, you know the and what is what is really um, start is that I open and I get to about page nine. Ten. Barbados case study. Oh, dang! And basically, there's a number that talks about the amount of of tourists that will not be coming back to Barbados because of the litter that they encountered. So and I was yes. You, you were. And it, made, it was. It was. It was. It was I, I. I. kind of maybe having a mental block because I don't want to remember that figure. It was pretty darn high. That, in thousands or hundreds? No, it's in percentage, like fifty percent, something like half the people that come here say they won't be coming back because of the litter. So, oh, we are, so, so we are that losing, is crazy. So we are losing a lot of money then on that our main nuts. porn. And like I said, this thing was page 10. So I open this thing, I get this book, it's like... What year? What year? Huh? It was like some study from like six years ago. I'm reading this thing, I'm like... Shh. I see Barbara say, yeah, oh, oh, damn. Oh, oh, no, oh, oh. Yeah. Next. That's why we let the key to my bra shoot, I'm not so on shoot. <laughs> yeah, ah. you know what I'm saying? So, you know... I, I, I recently started making a joke that, you know, uh, this is wrong, but you know, you unfortunately for many of us, we can tell the difference between Chapman Lane and Sandy Lane. Sandy. Right? Sandy. Oh, I would say, I will, I will go out on a limb and say it probably, uh, you know, if, if it was up to me, I would want all of our business, you know, working and running the whole Sandy Lane does. There's a lot of biodiversity there, it's beautiful, you know, there's, there's a, what, what am I talking about? Some paved streets. Um, some painting buildings. Like, I don't want to say that, you know. A biodiversity. You ever do them, like some of them little, little roads that go up to through Susan Lane? Like, yeah. That's a lot of biodiversity and grown tr and like proper trees. But even, you notice that they don't cut down the trees in San Lane because they yeah, won't they let you. Yeah, they cut it But they're cutting down. I remember, go, I, go, I went to school in town, right? So mm -hmm. I remember when you used to look up, look across, the, you can see community college, you can see Roberts Manufacturing. Now, all the trees between college and you know, going up to um, two miles and stuff, all of them they remove all through Carrington Village and stuff because we don't have the tree maintenance. We have, in some cases, high population well, density. We always look house maintenance. Um, well, that's the thing. Why? Because we, 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 we have gotten into a case where, um, and this is probably a big, big discussion, but I'll try to wrap it or wrap it into the the waste management talk, where Barbados has gone through a lot of modernization mm -hmm. in the last forty years or so. Yes, yeah. Um, do, well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's let's stage that out. Let's mm -hmm. stage that out. Um, Barbados was deprived. We all know that history says that you know we were the gem of the English, uh, English British Empire. Then we went through fluctuations of our fortunes because we were tied to King Sugar. Um, I'm presently rereading re a book, um, Fao Fao Hoyas, um, uh, which is Fred Hoyas, which is. Um, from the Mount, uh, Amerindian to Independence, yeah. you know, great popular book. I think we all used to have it in school. Sunday school, school, yeah. I yeah, I, I'm now rereading. I'm like, I found it. I'm like, damn, I used to read this book like 300 years ago. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and you remember those like those changing fortunes, and then you know World War One, they cut the sugar beet yeah. in Europe. So then sugar shot back up. But then by 1921, we were back down. And then by 25, we were back up. And then you know. You know, then we had the 37, yeah, yeah, then we had the 37 riots, and then fast forward then, you know, England after the war, back up, and so, yeah, we you know, so then they sucked out a lot of our brains and talents and nurses and teachers and all kinds of people went up there. So we've had these things, but then, you know, you get to, um, and, and our, our, so our civil service up to like the, the, the 70s, 80s were deprived. Really? Yeah, 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 yeah. 
we were we were very good at certain things. We, you know, we ex, you know we exported policemen and judges to Bahamas and Canada. I didn't have those 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 numbers to fill. And you know, we have great talented uh, nurses and entire bands of you know uh, teaching profession that went overseas and so on. The movie Sydney for is based on a Barbadian teacher. Yeah, to okay. serve with love. That's that's like a, a thing there. You you think that you mentioned about the civil service and, and what's not and you know, I would say the mental shifts that the country went through in, in those in that time. So you think it is the case where well I like to refer to them as gatekeepers. The gatekeepers choose to keep a traditional mentality in place. We've had a change in the guard, huh? In, in some instances. But well, well, I mean think about it, somebody that went into the civil service that you run into today is sixty three years old. They went in in the 70s, but 40, but, 40 years ago. But I like to say that that person is more of the consumer as opposed to being um, the master. So if it is that our, our civil service does the same things that it did back in the early 60s, 70s, 80s, 80s, it's still doing no. Really, really and truly, we have not had a change in terms of in the public interaction with I would say the private citizen. So we're at like we use sanitation since we on garbage. We use sanitation. Mm -hmm. Is the way sanitation engaged in the public relevant for these things? Well as sanitation service already has been set up and yes they have um you know they they have their various um method of getting out to public you know um, mm -hmm. to the public right now you know they use social media like uh, you know like most of us do so we have better tools to go into our yes, uh, you know, exactly what right. you were saying but we modernize a little bit but um it's it's getting faster it's you know the pace and you know um, we our population has gone to gone from you know about two hundred and fifty five thousand mm -hmm. just twenty years ago to two hundred and eighty five thousand now so yeah. we've, we've had a bit of an increase We've had those changes. We're just not being able to, let's say, keep up with the changes. You know, um, what's happening? So an entity like like um, SSA uh, may not have all the necessary tools. I don't know how big their their public outreach department is mm -hmm. um, to be able to uh, mm -hmm. to do to do all the work that is necessary to help educate the public. And it's not that we can't do it. But 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 it, it might be off topic a little bit. My biggest problem with these is that, unlike you would see a big company like Harris Paints, or mm. right, for example, big for, industry, big for these parts, right? yeah, no, okay. meaning that I've learned years ago is you collect garbage. Mm -hmm. You're good at collecting garbage. Collect garbage. The meaning that that outreach or that social media or that marketing. And I find that that's where I feel find that a lot of government agencies fall down. Those things can be outsourced. But you want the government information services? No, 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 no. The government information service is just a dissemination of information. It's not a marketing. Then service. you still need someone to help break down that message and, and to get it out. Of Correct. So I'm just saying, big company like uh, banks, they pay red advertising, so they don't have to worry about staffing. They tell them what they want. And they get the message across. Yeah, they don't have to have so in house a in house because department. they have a marketer. Uh, advertising, advertising that designer, that for them. Advertising. So you, you, let's say if it costs this government one million to run their advertising, you I mean that's like you could pay like two, three hundred thousand a year and get your crop. But so uh, I think that want, what I want to address though is um, this is a this is a mentality issue as it relates to the let's just say wanted to be a gar a garbage collector, mm -hmm. right? And when the teacher goes wrong and asks everybody at school. Let us say, you want to be? You say, what do you want to be? I can hear a doctor, lawyer, attorney, manager. Really? I think I find that it's changing. No, I don't want to like my time. But I feel like I want to work with computers, I want to design video games. But nevertheless, how many times you can hear I want to be a garbage man or I want to be a garbage collector? Uh, thanks to the fact that we more prefer intellectuals to do things. So when, when, I finish school now and I we would say a garbage person is, is reserved for the man who ain't got no CXCs and who can't do no better in life. But then you I, I am a, I am a, as an auditor, right, in a in a uh, big four firm no going in. The garbage man works some more money than me. 
he has more benefits. He has more benefits than me. More off days than me. More downtown than me. But I can drive fast. He has an auto thing in depth. Yeah, Driving yeah, my yeah, car, yeah. right? And 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 laugh at him and yeah. say, well, you know. So to deal with that perception as well in a in a prideful culture like Barbados is obviously we can butt some serious in rules. Yeah, so yeah, really. I think you gotta to sort of break down those walls. That's that's where that's there. where we yeah. occupy that space. I like to think of us, um, you know, I I do my own research. I do travel for research as much as I I don't travel as much as each other would like to, but I have committed mm-hmm. myself to the cause. Um, is that we we like to think of ourselves as where the tire meets the road. We're actually that contact point where the tire meets the road. This is Project Earth. Mm-hmm. Project Life Earth. Because mm-hmm. what we do is we really help. As I mentioned earlier, we look. At, you know, a behavior management approach to really work through the issues. Like, you know, like, um, it's amazing to find out why people don't separate their garbage. It's been a journey for me because mm-hmm. I, I had the opportunity to live in not one but two countries overseas, you know, uh, outside of Barbados where it was just implemented at a particular time mm-hmm. and I mm-hmm. happened to live in there and everybody just does it. So I do it too. Like, all right, this way, put your garbage, put your garbage. I, I, I want to ask a question. Right. Jeremy, sir, just before uh, you ask a question, we were going down to just to be run over the, yeah, well, almost a one and a half. Um, I know that Mr. J, you would have brought some yes um, stuff that you, I would just give him a chance to share and just explain what you brought. Okay. Uh, we just have about seven minutes in. Okay, so I'll make this real quick. I'll go right. in three and, and this, you got to lift it up above your uh, Okay, side, so side here side. we have is, um, sorry, uh, if you mark the block field. So this is just a little bit of um, a, a sample. This is just uh, dry leaves. Mm-hmm. So this is the carbon element of what would be going into a compost, right? So to when, so compost is the end product. Okay. When you are trying to um, recycle this, this material, this is the kind of the yard, um, yard leaves that you would find and so on. Um, so this is the carbon element. I didn't bring what would be the fresh cuttings and skins and cucumber and you know mm-hmm. those scraps and the stuff you take out the bottom of the sink and those mm-hmm. sink strainer. Mm-hmm. That would be the nitrogen rich, that basically think wet stuff, mm-hmm. right? Okay. Now, um, what we're trying to do is, what we're doing is take a page out of Mother Nature where we mimic what happens, you know, when you have a mixture of dry, dry organic material and wet organic material, you mix them up with a mixture of, of you know, the air, because the, the aerobic bacteria, which meaning with air, um, will start to consume. And then you also have a lot of like what we call pill bugs around here and many other little creatures um, that they help break it down. And when you're done, as it moves along, right it mm-hmm. goes down to this area um it comes down to this big this, with this bag which is really full so i just want you to know to me how heavy that is which is very light very light and then compared to that now you might give it a lift so just okay. think of how much volume of those leaves you would get for a whole to get down to that yeah. so we're talking about volume reduction so by composting by separating your waste and composting it down you get a volume reduction so uh, and this is also when you talk about the economics of it, Kimar, is something that can um, generate. Um, I've heard a lot of talk, and I, 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 I brought some newspaper, newspaper clippings that talk about this need and desire to create jobs. Um, there are many jobs to be created from a situation where you can um, uh, have the separated waste streams, mm-hmm. you can have decentralized uh, composting taking place. Whether uh, whether it's north, south, east of the island, center of the island, mm-hmm. and what you're doing, you're essentially eliminating the carbon footprint, the diesel cost. The economics of it means that you're no longer mm-hmm. trying to take, let's say we take um, 12, you know, 1,300, 12, 1,300 tons of garbage per day. That's what they say, huh? mm-hmm. of garbage per day in Barbados. Um, a truck, a uh, compacted truck, can only hold about, um, I think, uh, I think it's 10, it's 20 cubic meters. That's a lot of trucks. There's a reason why the road going up to I, Shop I, Hill. I, I, I so I millions of dollars. So we turn in millions of dollars. I, 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 I can stick a pin there for a minute. You yeah. Know, no, you spoke about trucks. Because this is one issue I think we should address in the show. Now, the Sanitation Service Authority says that they currently have, I think, 21 trucks. And they said that the optimum output for them in terms of the amount of trucks they need is 35. Now, based on what we have here in terms of recycling, mm-hmm. our garbage, and sorting, and that sort of stuff. If Barbados is truly serious about moving forward, um, as you said, be a clean Barbados, um, be environmentally friendly, mm-hmm. um, and also take advantage of all of the research and knowledge that is out there, is um, one, the question, first question I want to ask is, do you believe that 35 trucks is even a sufficient number to start 
do it at the San Diego Sales Authority, all right? And then I remember when we had spoken previously, you spoke about the quality of trucks that we get in Barbados and the um, garbage that goes into those trucks and how the garbage itself is what was causing the trucks um, to break down. Yes, so what you're dealing with, um, as I would have mentioned to you earlier, is, um, and this is the, the last the last final product, is when the stuff looks really good and it's ready to you know, be using for planters and plants. Well, how long does this process take? Um, you can get compost as quickly as in about is four to six weeks for our our temperate. And then the beauty part of it for our temperatures and our, our humidity that we have here. And then the best part is we can make compost year round. When you look at temperate climates where it mm -hmm. freezes and so on, there's whole parts of the year where unless you have a huge compost yard and uh, so then therefore is it something that we could then export? Yes, it is. It is something um, we we personally import compost amendment products. Sorry, what about the cost of four million US dollars plus? What about um, we we, 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 we have the we had the seaweed. So I got some chemicals. Sorry, so some there, there are some concerns about heavy metals uh, within it, but um. As far as the processing of the sargassum seaweed, I have a paper um, provided by uh, uh, Ian Gibbs from the Ministry of Agriculture, mm -hmm. where um, that was actually a common practice in the 16 and 1700s. Yes, it was. Um, to, to go um, when there was the inundations of, of mm -hmm. sargassum seaweed on the, sh on the shores, mm -hmm. they would go and collect it with donkey carts and take it back up to help replenish the fields. But going back to your question, yes. Um, so, sorry, you're saying it can't be used? It can be used. It can be used. So um, the, the, the number one aspect to the, the hindrance to the yeah. processing of sargassum is the actual collection of it. The same story with the garbage. You still have to haul it. You still have to have the trucks. You still have to go on the beach. But it was a big thing when I saw a lot of people like, you know, they say Mark Hill mm -hmm. and those guys. Um, I think In fact, they made an effort and then they were like, okay, this is probably a lot of work and we don't know how it's going to go. We don't know the final product. But was it, was it it's a, an avenue in which it, we can process that. But product. was it a problem? Where was where did the problem like that? You're talking about you just showed us leaf. You just showed us how much quali quality of quantity of leaf mm -hmm. versus how much um, compost you can get. And my like ten to one reduction. Ten right? to one, but where we are seeing this huge amount of seaweed mm -hmm. all across Barbados. Mm -hmm. What was the like a field or two five acres of land? And you're dumping it and then using it composable because even if you leave it to dry mm -hmm. for however long, you can the, the dry it still it's still it's still correct. I was just gonna say it creates um but but it, and there's and so much land so it has, it has, to, so there is it has to be introduced into a wider composting scheme that will allow for the process where you're taking this very rich nitrogen material mm -hmm. straight out the sea, so there's some elements of the you know the, the sea salt within it, mm -hmm. but then you have to mix it with some of the of the dry stuff. Mix it in, and you have to have, you know. Uh, but is it possible? It is possible, but once again, you're talking not. It's not labor intensive. It's capital intensive in the sense that you still need a certain amount of caterpillar trucks, um, front end loaders, and stuff to be able to mix it because it was tons of the stuff. Mm -hmm. So that's why they're also trying to address it from an upstream, like trying to figure out why is there such so much sargassum okay. being created. But is it not pushing from other countries here? Yes, it is. Oh. But um, that that's why they're trying to address the problem upstream. Not that, but it's, it, you know, it's cost the... But the address reason. it, address it how? You said because... In other words, if there are contaminants, if there's um, runoff from, um, you know, mines and, you know, mega operations, farming mm -hmm. operations... Because nothing that it raises was... In, in, in Brazil going out, effluent coming yeah. out from the Amazon River, and it's enriching, and it's creating these uh, uh, these blooms mm -hmm. of sargassum, well, then they're saying, well, let's... So it's we, affecting the seaweed underneath. Yeah, yeah, let's address the issue upstream. But going back to your question with... Um, the amount of trucks um, mm -hmm. at the present rate, the amount of trucks. What will happen is we will get thirty. How many five trucks? They said thirty five trucks. Is that's, that's what we will need. And if we continue to throw away the garbage in the exact same way, mm -hmm. it will only be a matter of time before we go mash up. Thirty five. Before we go mash up. Before they mash up, because we throw all manner of things in there. Yeah. Um, as I explained to you. Um, Previously, but when you, but, liquids but, do not compress very but well. But they no. That's why you see the truck when it goes around the neighborhoods, it's it's literally leaking. It leaking. Right. Right. But, 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 but I mentioned that the, the mm. liquids from the garbage mm -hmm. is what is actually uh, causing the problems with the trucks. But but the trucks were not uh, correct. basically built for that. They're not okay. But the question is, who don't know this? Meaning that 
Or does it does it ministry? The average does person it, doesn't know. Great. Right. For, right, forget the average man. The average man probably don't know a lot. This is what you showed. No, that's yeah. okay. Right? No, no. I mean, in this context. Yeah, in this context. Yeah. yeah. Now, if again, this with the PR lacking, mm -hmm. and also the flip side of the question would be, does the people insights not policymakers yet? Does the people in it and 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 SSA know that the chemicals work marshalling jobs? So that's a, but that's a two point. Does they know? I I, I one know. and then mm -hmm. if 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 that chemical liquid whatever I know that there's something like if you mix if you throw a bar gel or you throw a bleach mm -hmm. then somehow we don't wait till the bleach done we throw the bleach in a little bit in a bottle or whatever mm -hmm. including imagine no bleach touching something like a like here here products yeah which carry acid mm -hmm. to some degree right then you throw that in our bleach church and then that thing no fuming and our combust. Bring it full circle. That's why waste management is so important. Important, but again, my problem is if what you're saying, the people are, as I said, no on the side, so you can enforce these. And I'm not saying put policy because any idiot can put policy, but this need to be some sensible way of enforcing education, sensitization to the issues, to the to the depth of the problem. And also, you know, in but let, let, me, let me start you there again. Okay. There's a big problem in Barbados. Mm -hmm. And they probably taking uh Jeremy Road to like but they won't put don't get tough that. There's a big problem with that word education, sensitization and all that in Barbados. Right? That people just don't care. Because if it don't bother me, I can't. I ain't kid. Yeah. If you toxin me one dollar and fifty cents for garbage, I can show my mother in here too. That kind of mentality that people have it's, it's a mess a sense of yeah. so my thing would be i mean take it take the foolish advice that if i are working within the sanitation put a list of things that cannot go in the trash can mm -hmm. and then give the onerous on the people to dispose of these other items at rather the certain sites but hold on and if you don't do that again the garbage they picking a the garbage that's it picking can i see I can see, I say I can bust open every bike, mm -hmm. but I can see things and we really well, bike clearly. We tried or, that. Or put a rule, we tried no that. black bikes, all white bikes, mm -hmm. really are uh, the street two bikes. And if I can see things in there, I take them out of there or let the whole bike by you. Why not do like the Americans and put a ticket for you? Or ticket. Pay but that's where you need policy framework. Correct. To this to I know the man is going to go a problem with that. But I would like, I would like us to get, I would like us as a population, a relatively small population. Um, one of the countries in Rio Grande, my neighborhood was two hundred fifty thousand people. Wow. My neighborhood was nearly as big as Barbados. Okay, I mean, come on now, we're not that many. And I always, I always like to make a joke. Well, this is twenty one by four, and we could do this. Yeah, but with Barbados, my side is ninety by ninety. Yeah, we need to just get a little bit ahead of the problem. That's why I, I wear a smile on my face through all of this because, like I said, when I started this a few years ago, um, compost was like what compost was that music? Mm -hmm. People just wasn't checking for it. People wasn't checking for the environment. Luckily now, you know, with the social media and everything, we're all tapped into it. And all the sounds like Dorian and people getting afraid. When is the ban when is the ban imposing officially on the class of bikes? Um when it's come to I, the I'm not I, I, I just care for the one that, that, that affects us personally at Labor, which is the for the processing of of, of or the food waste. Mm -hmm. Um so styrofoam 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 was terrible. I I had a project I was working on last year um, well, here these new materials are even more terrible because some of them cut the inside. No, no, they're fantastic. They're fantastic. They're fantastic. No, no, not breaking it down. But I knew that this and some awesome. of them are then some that the, the chemicals that they were making with some of them were very yeah, hazardous. That's, that's a bit. Oh, that's a bit um, overblown as a con of a concern as compared to what styrofoam was doing. So I'll explain. Well, styrofoam does not allow. So styrofoam is darn near useless after it's been used. But hold on, I think the concern wasn't epic. Um, they were useless people are concerned about the effects that new materials that we are mandated to use have on your personal health and yeah they're, they're, that's they're that's the if, have you ever had have you ever had a hamburger served in a small styrofoam thing or any yeah. anything fried yeah do you yeah. notice that it eats so styrofoam is down there useless but my gravy drop through these new ones ah uh, 
Yeah, well, then you need to cut back on the gravy. I know you're slim, but watch your heart. You know what I mean? No, I mean, no, 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 Styrofoam does nothing after it's been used. I after, it. after it's been contaminated mm -hmm. and you put the food gravy. I, I have a I have a particular way in which I can clean it out. I used to process it myself. Mm -hmm. Where um you know where you have the <coughs> you use a certain qu a quality of compost to do a dry clean mm -hmm. and remove and remove the lipids within the and then you can clean them and water wash them. But obviously nobody's gonna reuse the styrofoam. And uh, they're very know. they're very hard to process after the fact. At least with the um Compostable ones that are made out of different styles and types of cardboard and, and configurations. You know the ones that are not so perforated. The, the, the ones that are used are made out of cardboard. Essentially, cardboard. Some made out of bamboo. Some, some, some are made out of yeah. But, yeah, but fresh. the question, some are made gas. The question I want to ask now that viewers would be very interested to know. Interested to know. Are you just interested to know? No, but but viewers want to know this too. Um, the new material that we are using. Is it recyclable or is it? No, or this is the first time. It is. It is recyclable. It says that it's compostable. So you can actually reduce it. But what no. I want is the material that we're using. Can is when we take one of those containers and we um, put food in it. Is this the first thing that container or is it? Is this the first thing that material that made that container is actually being used or is that material that was recycled and now being reused? Okay, so I don't trick myself up because you kind of confuse me there. Yes, it is. In other words, it has not been cleaned and then handed back to you. It it is made out of material that can be introduced into a, a proper composting program. Can be broken back down to be like this here. Where oh, you never be able to tell the right, compost. Then when you go and buy your next thing, that's a fresh one that's been planted and. and that's and what it says here. on the mater material when you buy compostable. Yeah, compostable. I, I, I just want to be sure because oh. I, right. I I wouldn't want to use material that. Some. Well, I just use all sorts. You just go to a restaurant and eat some parts and drink some glasses. I think. I raised that cup yesterday. Yeah. But no, I used to work in a restaurant. You steam them parts and spoons. Yeah, come on. I was a poor that steam what? So 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 what? What happens when when they wait? They come into you and what? They fart, but they don't pick it up. They go and give you. We would hope that there are clean people in Barbados that would take that. Probably shot that what? It shouldn't happen. That does not happen. Should that 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 is not a factual statement you made. It does happen. I used to work in the restaurant. I used to work in the restaurant for myself. I and I've never seen it. I've never heard it. I've never heard it. So the fact of me actually seeing it, I'd be very weary because I was actually going to take the fart up and take it, but I'm going to wash it and break up and eat it. Oh, no, that's not that way. Because I tell you that I know I have seen it. I have seen it. But, but, but. Before I drop it in the ground, I'll pick it up. Oh, I remember. Right. I'll pick that. But I will not judge all. Yeah, not all, but. If I, I saw that happening. So, for example, you just had a restaurant. restaurants produce a lot of organic waste, mm -hmm. right, from food preparation. Yeah, and, for, and waste that after food. Is and then much. all of that stuff, it gets put in a plastic bag and gets put in the bag. Yeah, yeah. Restaurants, hotels. I was a porter, so I know that for right? sure. So, a lot of those, a lot of that organic waste that then is being picked up all, either by private haulers or by SSA mm -hmm. is placing a lot of stress on those vehicles, mm -hmm. the workers, and the communities which they have to do. But I thought that they had to get... Um, they have to get private, private. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah. It, 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 um, what what happens is a lot of that stuff then ends up going straight because it's being. I have videos and video evidence of certain establishments in Barbados where everything goes in there. You know the little um the little heaters. Yeah. The fuel in there. Yeah. That for the, for the catering. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Those are thrown in with so everything else. Are toxic. So basically, you just dump it in. in in the huge see-through bags, mm -hmm. thrown in the back of a private hauler, mm -hmm. and then guess what? That stuff goes all the way up to yeah. cell number five. Yeah. So cell number five was open in 2012. It was supposed. It is supposed to last since the 2021, unless we are going to do something miraculous and change it. That's not going to make it to 2021. I and I stand by that statement. So if you went by this year, you're in trouble. I, I well, they, they're going to have to find however much it costs, 25 right. million dollars to build US to make a brand new home. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to have to look for another hole to take us to 2030. Just give me one, let me dig it with a fart right now. Get, by, by then, 2030, come and be done. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so I, you guys have $50 million in okay, okay, yeah, well, you know, We were talking about all this, but one of the issues that we got to wrap up some of SSK okay. is also the maintenance of the vehicles. Yeah. 
Um, and those vehicles are, uh, we will all admit that right. they're placed under huge amounts so of stress. So, one of the, the complaints are that, for example, to, to, to get, like, for example, you could use certain things, let me say lubricants. You could use a higher quality lubricant that will last longer, mm -hmm. um, that would work better for the vehicles, mm -hmm. but it costs more money. Mm -hmm. But when it goes no back to the accountant now, or the person that deals with the cash, mm -hmm. I just look at numbers and say, okay, yeah, um, yeah. this bucket costs $100, this one calls for $100, mm -hmm. we're going to get a $100 bucket. Mm -hmm. They do not understand that using this product can actually cut down your meal because, okay, you might not have a so really nice these, car. These are the problems that and you don't put in expensive fuel or expensive oil, but you're still driving the car too fast. Correct. You're still speeding it around the corner. Or the mm -hmm. example that I gave you about the shoes, where you have a pair of shoes, you have a, a young child with a pair of shoes, he busts out the shoes mm -hmm. every six weeks. The issue is with you because you're not changing the habits. The fact of the matter is we need to change our habits with how we view mm -hmm. waste and garbage. Right. Right? We just have to. You simply just have to. I think everything that we've discussed here tonight um, should be, uh, you know, uh, something, uh, food for thought. If you want to just a seed to all the listeners to just give it a try. I always encourage people, give it a try. Try it for, try it for a couple of days. Try it for a week where you just put all your garbage once. Put all your food scraps on one side mm -hmm. and everything else the other side. And people are always like surprised like when they when they try it they're like wow like okay you you, you walk to the garbage can with swinging your garbage because it's just you know the, the wrappers from the tea times and the snacks and whatever mm -hmm. but is the water weight is that is that that which makes it the food waste that smells rank in our in our temperature mm -hmm. with our high humidities that stuff smells bad the day after you put it out Forget two and three days later. And especially when you can't If there's any animal protein, regular. if there's any animal protein, fish, um, chicken, uh, pork, anything, all that stuff smells. That's what becomes a vet, a vector issue as far as attracting rodents mm -hmm. and, 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 and cockroaches. So the fact of the matter is, if you can, if you can keep your newspaper and your, your cardboard dry, mm -hmm. right? Link with your neighbor, link with your other neighbor. Every community in Barbados got a truck man. Every community in Barbados has got a man with a Daihatsu Delta truck. I am pretty sure of it. Mm -hmm. Link with him, have or have these recycling come out for it, where you just keep the cardboard dry, because once it get wet, the cockroaches then they eat the stuff like it, like it's you know, like it's food. So the cockroaches so, eat cardboard. I mean, cockroaches eat anything. Right? Cockroaches can survive down anything. So the fact of the matter is, the waste separation is so important. Going back to this emblematic photo that we saw in last week's or week before last, mm -hmm. most of the stuff that's in here. Mm -hmm. If I was to do a, a, a waste audit and show you guys and we could walk through it, I would show you that a lot of material that's in there is actually stuff that can, it has a waste stream. So plastics one side, glass one side, um, you know, uh, heavy appliances one side, coconut, coconut, coconut skins another side, um, the, 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 the coconut shells. Um, these are ways that if we start to look at the, 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 the situation properly, we're no longer like the five-year-old child that one dress itself and put on a shirt backwards and got the buttons on do and mm -hmm. you got one, you know, your left shoe on your right foot and right shoe. We become a right-minded public where yeah. we are more aware. And whether you uptown or downtown massive, it don't matter. The fact of the matter is we all have a part to play in this. We I always like to say we all have opposable thumbs and a frontal lobe. So to to cap it all off, you could say huh? you could say if we do what we're supposed to do. As the point was made earlier in the show, Chapman Lane could look like Sandy Lane and everything would just be perfect about it. Yeah. We can right. get there. We can get there. We there's no reason why the biodiversity that's exhibited in Sandy Lane can't be exhibited. Don't be saying, it's the same country. It's not like Chapman Lane is in the Antarctic where you can't get the, the plants grow. It's just that they don't have access to certain like composting um um, certain aspects of waste management that allows for natural beautification, creation of jobs, jobs for youth, where you don't have to be a garbage collector, you can be a, a processor. Mm -hmm. You can be the person that does the spreadsheets on your phone, especially now with these computers that we have in our hands called telephone, cell phones. There's so much that can create micro businesses, right? That if we capture the resources that are inherently in our neighborhoods, mm -hmm. We can create jobs on site for the youth, so you don't have to, you know, spend three fifty to go and catch a job, to go a van to go and get a job halfway around the island. There are jobs to be created in close proximity, and that is understanding economic systems for what they can be worth to us, 
where not everybody has to, you can't have all accountants, you can't have all lawyers, you can't have all doctors. We live in a modern era where we have diversification of division of labor. Mm -hmm. So you got everything from PM to street sweeper, from doctor to sportsman. It, you know, there's, uh, there's, there must be a diversification. There must be a diversification, but guess what? We're humans, we consume, we're part of an economic system, and we all need to clean up after ourselves. Mm -hmm. All right, go ahead, Mr. Gill. Uh, we just want to thank you for your one knowledge. Thank you for having uh, you brought to us today. We really appreciate it. Um, the viewers certainly appreciate it. Uh, we were glad to have you here. Uh, we went like pretty this. lengthy discussion. Yeah. Um, but uh, we, we definitely know that it was an enriching discussion. Uh, we would love to have you back again in the near future uh, to, to see where you, where you, if people are really taking to heed what you are saying. Um, with that, we just want to thank like Waza Gu, um, Kuok, who are some of the main contributors. We got Eric Peters. Eric Peters and those. Eric Peters. Barry Jordan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and Barry Jordan, right? So, yeah. Right. So we just want to thank everyone, Indeed, all the persons yeah. that tune in to make the show possible. Um, we ask that everybody tune back in again Saturday at 6 o'clock where we will speak more. Um, but again, I want to thank you and labor. Uh, we look for just you know giving you time up to come and speak on the whole waste management. Yes, I definitely uh, thank you guys as well yeah. and shout out to the rest of the team. Yes. Yeah. So also, um, on next Wednesday, mm -hmm. we have an interesting, interesting discussion with um, no other than Peter Wickham. Peter Wickham. Oh, yes. Right. Next Wednesday, uh, we have some persons coming. We have some boys out there. Something there. I think it's somebody else can remember. Or the end of the United Nations. Just hold on. Yeah. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah. You got a number? You got a number? Well, you can see. Oh, I thought you had a number. Okay. Not this Saturday. Okay. Oh, yes. okay. So, we have some interesting people coming. Uh, the show is growing. We ask that you like, share, follow us. Um, support, bring your topics. If you have a business that you want to advertise with us, feel free to bring the business on. As well, if you have an event coming up, any events coming up on your side, like, uh, like Earth or anything, like, any events that you guys doing or um we have a few projects on our on, our, on a couple burners right now mm -hmm. um, we are working um with massey to uh, bring forward the school initiative mm -hmm. uh, green and schools um in the city this would be massey foundation uh no this would be uh, massey property okay um we're doing another work a uh, very important work that maybe have some more results on that i'd love to come back and be able to share with you guys some of our efforts as far as waste separation mm -hmm. and what can be done um in a commercial context um, I think it's something that's very important where we would like to see more of the private sector um, stepping up to the challenge of really um, examining their, their systems, as we were mentioning, mm -hmm. in other constituencies where companies have to put forward economic plans, many trees are planted to offset and all that. There's a lot that can be done um, right here in Barbados. It doesn't have to be a major international plan. Mm -hmm. um, so we'd love to share that with you guys. I would love to hear when you have it. So guys, um, also, I just want to shout out Fabian Sargent and his men's group does our men's empowerment network support. They're having an open discussion. The topic is cancer and men, and that Saturday at from six to eight p.m. Uh, the conference room at Barbados on the Association in Bay Street. Yeah, and don't forget this. Um, I think this is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, so you know we all turn out to the walk. But I said you didn't have me. I set you journey. Well, I, I tried to try to. You wasn't there. Well, I, I, I wasn't trying. I'm Make you market a wonderful walk. We had a very good time, and you know we support cancer. I saw some. We the so walk was wonderful. The ladies were wonderful. Yeah, it, 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 my wife was wonderful. She at home, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, she's watching. You know they leave it. I'll get in trouble. Um, but yeah, the um, this is what the show is about: educating, bringing things to knowledge, uh, bringing things, and all of our uh, moderators are doing big things out there. Uh, so we want to thank you again. If you need to advertise a business, link us. Any one of us, um, the money, uh, Jeremy, myself, Kimar, Kimar, and let us talk. Uh, if you have topics over there, more questions, more answers. So we want to just thank everyone for tuning in tonight and making the show possible. I would do. I do have a blessed and wonderful night.